All right, so we're going to look at two different types of polynomial division today. We're going to look at what's referred to as long division, and it's a process similar to what we did way back when in second and third grade when you learned how to divide um, numbers. So it's a similar process there. Um, we're going to use this in order to factor, and I'll get into a little bit more detail about that in just a second. The other type of dividing that we're going to look at is what's referred to as synthetic division, and that's kind of a shortcut way of doing the long division, so it's quicker and easier to do. So let's take a look, though. For those first examples here on this front page, we are looking at long division. So I want you to notice what the directions are saying. The directions say factor this polynomial, it's a big long polynomial, factor completely using long division if 2x minus 5 is a factor. So I need you to think first and make a note about what that means if a particular expression is a factor. It means that the the this factor will divide evenly into this large polynomial, which means then that we will not have a remainder. The remainder will just be zero. All right, so let's take a look. I need you to think back to our, our days of dividing with long numbers, because um, the process is going to be a little bit similar. So I want to actually look at, I'm gonna focus my attention on this first term, this 2x, and then I'm going to focus my attention on this 6x cubed, that particular term. So the first thing I need to do or determine is how many times we multiply or divide into 2x can go into 6x cubed. So another way of thinking about that is 2x times what is going to give us 6x cubed. So if we multiply 3x squared times 2x, we're going to get this 6x cubed that we need. So 3x squared, we're going to have to multiply that 3x squared times the 2x, and that gives us 6x cubed. Now, the other thing to realize is that we've got to multiply this 3x squared times this second term as well. So if we multiply that, we get minus 15x squared. So if you think about the process of long division that we did way back when, back in third grade, um, the process at this point is that at this, at this particular step, we actually subtract. So another way of thinking about that is that we're going to switch these signs. So I'm going to switch this sign and I'm going to switch this sign to its opposite sign. So I'm basically adding the opposite. And what should happen, what you notice is that this adds to zero. And that has to add to zero every time. If you don't get that that adds to zero, then you've done something wrong with your long division. But we do need to add these, these two terms because these are like terms. And if you add those, if you notice, we get 32x squared. And then if you recall, what we do from there is that then we bring down this next term. So this minus 104x. All right, and then we're going to divide again, and we have to divide 2x into this 32x squared. Or another way of thinking about that is 2x times what is going to give us this 32x squared. So I'm going to add, I have to multiply by a 16x, and if I multiply 16x times 2x, I do get 32x squared. And keep in mind, once again, I have to multiply that 16x times that negative 5. And that gives me 80x, so I get minus 80x. And once again, at this step, I'm going to switch my signs. I'm going to take the opposite of this. I'm going to take the opposite of this, and I'm going to add down my like terms. And once again, I should get zero, and I do. But here, I end up with a negative 24x, and then I'm going to bring down that plus 60. 
and once again I'm dividing again so I'm thinking about how many times 2x can go into negative 24x or what can I multiply by so 2x times negative 12 and then if, when I multiply again I get negative 24x I get plus 60 but once again, I'm going to switch these signs. So switch that sign, it becomes plus. Switch this sign, it becomes a negative. And I've gotten zero for my remainder, but all of that adds to zero, which should have happened. If it hadn't, I would know that I did something wrong because this problem is telling us that this particular expression is a factor, that 2x minus 5. So it should divide evenly. So now, if you notice, down here, I wrote this reminder to myself. If it's asking us to factor completely using long division, then I know one of my factors is this 2x minus 5. But I have to figure out what the other factors are. So once we do that division, if you notice, I have this answer of 3x squared plus 16x minus 12. So what this is asking us to do is to take that answer and we have to factor it. And so to factor this, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to give me 3x squared. So that's going to be have, have to be x and x. And then back here, I'm looking for numbers that are multiplying to give me a negative 12, but that when I combine them together, give me this positive 16x. So if you think about it, it's going to need to be a 2 and a 6. That's going to give us a 2x and an 18x. Remember, the bigger of these two numbers needs this sign. So this has to be positive, which means, oops, which means this is positive, and that's going to be negative. So foil that back out if you're not quite sure and you want to check that. But those are other factors. So this factors completely into 2x minus 5, that was the one we were given, that was the factor we were given, times 3x plus 2 times x plus 6. All right, I need you to, if you need to pause and work through that again and kind of think through some of that, if you need to make a note about something that you've got questions on, please do that as well. Let's take a look at these other examples. Um, if you notice on this one, where I'm kind of giving you a hint, we're gonna end up with a remainder here, okay? All right, so we've got this long polynomial and we're supposed to divide 2x minus one into that. So once again, I'm looking, I'm gonna focus my attention initially on the first term of that expression of what I'm dividing by and then I'm looking at figuring out how many times or how I can divide into that particular term. So I'm trying to decide how many times does 2x go into 6x cubed and it goes 3x squared times. So if I multiply 3x squared times 2x I do get 6x cubed. And then you have to remember to multiply by that other term too. So 3x squared minus 1, so I get minus 3x squared. Now, I like to change the color here just to remind you, because this is such an important step. We're switching these signs, and we have to add straight down. So subtracting is the same thing as adding the opposite. So we're taking the opposite sign, and then we can add straight down. So that should add to 0, and it does and I get negative 2x squared plus 9x. And now I want to decide what do I have to multiply 2x by in order to get negative 2x squared? And that would be negative x. So if I multiply negative x times 2x, I get negative 2x squared. If I multiply negative x times negative 1, I get plus x. And now, once again, I'm switching signs. So I'm using another color here so I can switch these signs. So that's plus 
this becomes a negative x. And then I want to add. So let me go back to one of my basic colors here. That does add to 0. Here I get 9x minus x, so I'm left with 8x. And then I'm bringing down this 6. So 2x goes into 8x four times, and four times 8x, I'm sorry, four times 2x is 8x. Four times negative one is negative four. Switch those signs to the opposite. And if you notice, my remainder is 10. Now, I need you to think back to your mathematical days of doing your long division way back when. We are not going to leave our answer like this. Proper form for writing this, if we do not have a rem if if we have a remainder, excuse me, is that our answer is up here, this main part. So this three x squared minus x plus four, but then we put our remainder. So plus ten over whatever we divided by. So this is proper format. Um, this answer is coming from what we got up here. And then our remainder is put over what we divided by. All right. I'd like you to try one of these. I'm giving you this hint. I didn't explain any of this because it didn't happen in any of the other problems. So that's why I wrote this out for you as well. But I'd like you to try to solve this one yourself. Um, I'm going to pause the video so that you can look at it, try to solve the problem yourself, and then I will have the work there for you to check your answer. So, sorry, I meant to talk to you about that placeholder. So if you notice the degree of these polynomials, it reduced, it goes from 3, but then there was no x squared term, and then there was x to the first, and then the constant. So if we are missing a particular place, in this case the x squared, you need to include that in your division problem so that you have that as a placeholder. So we've got to add in a 0x squared to kind of help us with that math. Okay, hopefully you worked through this problem. I'm going to leave the work there for a second for you to look through. Um, I tried to kind of highlight the changes in signs, these negatives that change to positives, these positives that change to negatives, that type of thing, so that you could kind of check along the way. Um, hopefully you got for your answer this 5x squared minus 20x plus 83. And then if you notice, it's kind of personal preference whether you choose to write that as minus 338 over x plus 4, or you could write that as plus a negative if you wanted to also. So either way on that. Okay, that is long division. And yes, it is a tedious process. The good news is, is that synthetic division is faster and easier. Um, there are kind of some little tricks to it as well, so we'll take a look at that. So, so synthetic division is a shortcut for dividing a polynomial by a linear factor of the form x plus or minus c. So that's kind of a key point to keep in mind, is that it has to be a linear factor of the form x plus or minus c. So if you notice, the division that we did, if you go back and look, the division that we did on the front page, we were dividing by a um, 2x minus 5, a 2x minus 1. The other one was by x plus 4. So technically, we could have done that using synthetic division. But um, we can only use synthetic division if we're dividing by a nice pretty x plus or minus a number. Um, Hoping you should have actually seen this process previously in Algebra 2 of actually doing synthetic division. So to divide a polynomial by the factor of x minus c, what I want you to notice is that, remember that the if it's of the form x minus 3, then notice that what goes inside this little box here, we switch that sign. We write it as if it's a 0 or a root or a solution. 
Um, and then we are focusing our attention, if you notice, on the, just the exponents. And once again, if you have a missing placeholder, you've got to include a zero in there. So if you notice, we've just got the numbers, the six, the negative 25, the 18, and the nine. Okay, the process that we use, um, once we have set this, kind of set up this format here of having the number here with the box, and at the end, we always put a little box here because that's gonna be our remainder. So we have our coefficients. So we always add down. So if you notice, this is saying we, we bring the six down actually. And then we multiply whatever number we have here, we multiply it times whatever number is in the box and it goes into that next spot. So six times three is 18. And then we add these numbers. So negative 25 plus 18 gives us negative seven. And then we multiply that times the number in the box. So negative seven times three gives us this negative 21. We add straight down and get this negative three. Negative three times positive three gives us negative nine. And we add straight down and we get a remainder of zero. Now that tells us X minus three divides evenly Another way of saying that is that x minus three is a factor, okay? Remember this, I've got it highlighted in green here. These coefficients here are our answer. It's what's referred to as the reduced polynomial. Some textbooks refer to it as a depressed polynomial or a reduced polynomial. It reduces the degree of the polynomial by one so what that's telling us then is that our answer, what's left over now, our answer that we still need to probably work with in some instances is reduced by a degree of one. So this is saying the coefficient is six x squared minus seven x minus three. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples of synthetic division. And yeah, actually first I'm gonna do this and then we'll go back and talk about that. So it says the quotient has, the quotient, that's our answer, has one degree less than that of the dividend and is called a reduced polynomial. So you heard me say that term already, but I'm gonna mention it again. Reduced polynomial, some textbooks and sources refer to it as a depressed polynomial because it is reduced or depressed by one degree. All right, let's take a look at these particular examples here. So it says use synthetic division to answer the following problems. So the first thing I want you to notice on this particular example is that we are missing the x term. So if you notice, we have degree of three, degree of two, we do not have a degree of one. And so that's why I have zero in there as a placeholder. Now, if we're asked to divide by this factor of x minus four, we write that actually as a zero. We switch the sign and put that in as a zero or a solution as positive four in our box. So x minus four as a factor means we put a positive four in the box. Um, and then we're gonna do the process here. So we add straight down, so this number always comes straight down. So we've got one here. And then we're multiplying one times four. So we get four. And then we add a negative six plus four gives us a negative two. Negative two times four gives us a negative eight. And then we add again, so zero plus a negative eight gives us a negative eight. And negative eight times four gives us negative 32. And if we add nine and negative 32, we get a negative 23. So once again, let's look at our, this is our reduced or depressed polynomial. So we have to reduce the degree to one from what we started with. So if that's x cubed, we reduce it to one. So this is saying we have one x squared minus two x minus eight. And that number in the box is always your remainder. So in this case, we have minus 
23 over x minus 4. All right, we're going to look at one other example. I want you to think about what we're going to have to put into the box. If you notice, I've put my leading, my coefficients here, negative 3, 16, 3, negative 10. We have all of those in descending order, so that's part's fine. We don't have to add any placeholders. If we have y equals, I'm sorry, y minus 3, then that means a positive 3 goes in the box. And I'm going to add straight down, so this gives us negative 3. And then I am multiplying times this number, so I get negative 9. And then 7 times 3, which gives me 21. So I'm adding 24. 24 times 3 gives me 72. And my remainder is 62. So depressed or reduced polynomial is going to be of degree 2 for the first term. So this is going to be negative 3. This is actually using y's, so let's use y's. Negative 3y squared plus 7y plus 24 plus 62 over y minus 3. All right, we're going to talk more about how we really use synthetic division. Hopefully you're going to become very fast and masterful and proficient at using it because we will be doing a lot of work where we are using synthetic division. Please make a note about any questions you have on any of this so that you can come and talk to us.